Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how to find an electrical short in your car fast and easy. Now, how do you know that you have an electrical short in your car? Well, let's say your car wouldn't start off for a few days or even after sitting overnight. Then the chances are you have a drain on your battery due to a potential short. So I'm going to show you a simple test that you can easily do by yourself at home to identify where the short is so you can easily fix a problem. This video is geared to beginners who have never done any electrical work in their car. So before we begin, let me show you how this test work. In cars, there are lots of electrical components and the wiring that supply current to make them work. All these components get their current from the battery. So when you turn them on, for example, let's say you turn the headlights on, then the current from the battery find a path to go through the headlights, so the headlights turns on. Car batteries can produce very large currents. So to stop the switch from going bad, a relay is used in the circuit. To stop the headlight and the wiring from going bad, mainly due to a power surge or a short, a fuse is also used in the circuit. So if you have a battery drain, then the current has to go through the fuse. Because your car has many other electrical components and all these components need to be protected, a separate fuse and a relay is used in each circuit. The place where we can find these relays and fuses is called the fuse box. And all cars have at least one fuse box. So if there's a short anywhere in your car's electrical system, then the current has to go through the fuse box. All you had to do is to check all the fuses inside the fuse box, one fuse at a time to see which circuit drains the current. Now the location for the fuse box could be anywhere in the car, depending on the type of car you're working on. It could be under the hood, under the dashboard, or inside the boot. The exact location for your car's fuse box is mentioned in your owner's manual. In the case of this car, we have the fuse box right next to the battery. These small cubes right here, that is your relays. These tiny strips down here, these are your fuses. Alright, now we are ready for the test. First, you want to make sure you have a fully charged battery. So you want to get a multimeter. You don't need an expensive one for this, even a cheap multimeter will do. Then connect the black lead into the common jack and the red lead into the voltage jack. Then you want to select 20 DC volts and connect the red lead to the positive terminal and the black lead to the negative terminal. You want to see a reading between 12.4 volts and 12.6 volts or above. We have 12.8 volts here, so we are good. If your battery is low on charge, then you want to connect the battery to a battery charger. Or you want to start the car and leave the engine running for at least 30 minutes. So the alternator will charge the battery. Once your battery is fully charged, then you want to make sure you turn everything off in the car. Now we have to disconnect the negative battery terminal and keep it aside. Then you want to get your multimeter again and turn the dial into 10 amps. And you want to plug the red lead into this jack where it says 10 amps. The reason why we go for the highest amps is that we don't know how big is the current draw on the battery. So if you select milliamps and the actual drain happens to be a larger current, then we're going to damage the multimeter. By selecting the larger current first, we are not risking the multimeter. Then you want to bridge the gap between the battery post and the terminal. So you want to connect the red lead into the battery post and the black lead into the terminal. Now you're going to check the multimeter reading. In most modern cars, the car's computer is still taking some current from the battery even when the car is not running. So if you are getting a reading up to 35 to 50 milliamps, that is normal. But we have 1.3 amps, that is 1300 milliamps and that is a significant drain. So now we had to go to the fuse box. But I only have two hands, so I'm going to use a clamp and one alligator clip to keep the test leads connected to the battery. Alright, now we're going to start pulling one fuse at a time. What we are doing is we are disconnecting one circuit at a time. And what we're going to be looking is a drop in the multimeter reading as we pull off the fuses. And there it is. Now this is a circuit that drains the current. So the short is in this circuit. Then you want to see what fuse it is. It is the second row, one, two, three, third from the top. Then you want to go to the fuse box cover. Here's the second row, one, two, three, third from the top. And that is the fuse for the radio. So let's go to the radio. Now we had to disconnect the radio. Then if the reading drops down to normal, then the radio is faulty. If the reading did not drop to normal, then the short is in the wiring harness between the radio and the fuse box. So you have to chase the wires that go through the radio and the carpets or under the dashboard and that can be a real pain to find. If that is the case with your car, then you better get a circuit tester kit like this. This kit comes with a transmitter and a receiver. You want to plug the transmitter to the fuse with the short circuit. 
then the transmitter will start sending electric pulses along the wires. The receiver can sense that signal, so the receiver then start to beep. All you have to do is to follow the rough position of the wire with the receiver. If the receiver stops beeping as you go on, that is because the receiver cannot detect the signal, and that is where the short is. But in the case of this car, I don't think that we have any short in the wiring or in the radio. However, I have one spare subwoofer installed in the boot. So I have a feeling that it could be the sub. So let's go to the boot, and here it is. It doesn't look that bad at a glance, but aha, uh -huh, there it is. Look what we got here. We found the short. The speaker wires are shorted out. Apparently these wires got so hot and it has even melted into the plastic. So we're gonna have to disconnect the sub. Now whoever installed this sub did a rubbish job using these really thin wires. So I'm using some proper speaker wires to rewire this. So that is how you find a short in a car fast and easy. Here's one thing you need to know when you're doing this. Make sure you don't open any doors or do anything that draws the current from the battery because now we have the current from the battery going through the multimeter and any excessive current flow through the multimeter will burn your multimeter. Let's say you have another fuse box under the dashboard. Then you have to leave the doors open but be sure to turn all the interior lights off before you begin. This test we did so far is called the parasitic current draw test. And if you're gonna do this test in a modern car, this test is not gonna be that accurate because in modern cars, there's so many computers and control modules that are always gonna draw some current from the battery. And if you're gonna disconnect the battery, then those control modules may shut off and the short will disappear temporarily, leaving you to not find the short at all. So if you're doing this test in a newer car, then you're gonna have to trick the car's computer into thinking that it is time for the car's computer to go to sleep mode. In other words, you had to turn everything off in the car, shut all the windows and doors and then lock the car. But if you shut the doors and the hood, then we can't access to the car to do the test. Most cars have a door switch somewhere along this A pillar or this B pillar. In this car we have the door switch right here. When you close the door, this switch get pressed up against the door. And that's how the car's computer know whether the door is closed or open. So even it's a clamp to hold the switch pressed down. Let's say you don't have a door switch anywhere around the door, then your door switch is inside the door. So you wanna use a screwdriver to latch the door locks manually and disable the door switch on the door. Then you wanna do the same with the hood latch. That way we can lock the car without closing the doors. If you have a keyless entry, then you wanna keep the key fob far away from the car so that the car cannot detect the presence of the key fob. Then you wanna leave the car for about an hour, giving enough time for the car's computer to go to sleep mode. Then you wanna go to the fuse box, and you wanna check the voltage drop across the fuses. Now here's what's happening. If there's a short, there should be a current draw. If there's a current draw, then for very small currents, the fuses will act as a resistor. If the current is going through a resistor, then there should be voltage drop from one end to the other. So now you wanna get to your multimeter and turn the dial into millivolts. Then you want to test each fuse just long enough to see if the reading goes to zero. If you notice a voltage drop across the fuse, then that is the circuit with the short. And this way you can find any short in any modern car without even having to disconnect the battery. Now let's say you check all the fuses but you couldn't find any short but your battery still keeps dying overnight or in a few days time. Then you probably have a very old battery that can hold the charge anymore. Or perhaps your battery is internally shorted out. Or you have a bad alternator diode. Testing your battery and the alternator is very simple and you can easily do it at home. I already have two videos on how to test your car battery and the alternator. And I'll be sure to link those two videos in the description down below, along with all the other tools I have used in this video, so you can easily find them. Also, if you haven't subscribed, definitely consider subscribing. We have cool videos coming up and I'll see you in the next one.